me start the recording and I'll swap that back. Pardon my big head for a minute there. And welcome to our pre-hack workshop. Um, this is brought to you by the Fashion Tech Hackathon 2021. This year, it's next uh, weekend already, which is a little bit uh, frightening that it's come at us so quickly. It's, it's a quick start to the year, a very positive year, it seems. And um, we provide this event this year via virtual means. It's going to be online. And we thought, what better person to partner with? There's a little bit about the event, uh, which now I can't go backwards. Uh, but who are best to partner with and Clo? This past year, it, it has been such an integration of virtual fashion into the industry and supply chain. And I think it's a disservice to our students if we don't integrate this into uh, our education um, courses and also our co-curricular um, endeavors. So this is why it was fantastic to connect with Kaylee, one of our, our alumni, um, via Ann Walters, our New York studio director. And um, they put on some fantastic educational events. So, uh, and they have, such amazing resources online. I wanna give them as much time as possible. And then I have a little bit to talk at the end after our questions about the hackathon. In the meantime, I am gonna post in the chat some uh, links to the hackathon for mentor registration, for student registration, and just the general website. Um, so I am handing it off to Kaylee and Courtney, specifically Courtney, thank you so much for being here ladies and for showing us the world of Clo and 3D fashion. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, hi everyone, uh, Kaylee and I are super excited to be here with you guys today. Um, it was super interesting hearing from Margarita more information about the hackathon. It's not something that I was familiar with before. I know Kaylee being an alum, she was very familiar with it. Um, but we're super excited to be here today to share some information with you about CLO. Um, some of you who might be taking a class where you're learning CLO, um, you guys will be using CLO in the classroom and that's super exciting. Um, but today we're here to short share some more information uh, specifically for those who are interested in maybe potentially using CLO in the hackathon. Um, and I just wanted to start out by level setting and saying that for you guys who are interested in using it for this project, or even for those of you who are outside of the classroom but want to explore CLO on your personal time, you can always go to our website, download a free trial for 30 days, or sign up with your student email address for the student discount. Um, but for those of you who are taking it in class, you guys are lucky enough to be able to have CLO licenses to use um, in class when you learn CLO in your curriculum. Um, so give me, um, I should just say too, I'm the business development manager for the Americas at Clo. I've been with the company for a little over a year now. I do have a design background though. And so I really came to Clo because I saw the opportunities that this gave to designers to really empower them to take their concepts and ideas to the next level. Um, so with that, give me one moment. I'm going to turn off my camera and share my screen just to make sure that I have a strong connection. And without further ado can everyone see my screen right now can you see the dress that is being somewhat assembled yes awesome okay great so then with that uh we will kick it off with where it all began at clo um so funny enough today is actually our 12th birthday we were founded in january of 2009 by our founder Jaden who was studying garment simulation um, for his thesis in school at the time. And as the story goes, he had a couple of friends who were fashion designers and he gave them the first version of Glow to test and play around with. Uh, they loved it. They saw the value of designing in a 3D space to expedite their design process and eliminate samples. Um, and so for that reason, um, he, he ended up sharing this with the fashion industry um, around on the world. And so they came back at that time, though, and said that they were not interested in designing in a 3D platform. Um, and so he actually ended up shifting gears uh, because there was another industry at the time that was in dire need of some change. And that was the CGI gaming and entertainment industry. So if you all think back to that very first Toy Story movie that you saw, you probably remember how blocky Woody's clothing was and how he never changed outfits throughout the entire movie. And that's really because because of how time consuming it was for those 3D artists at the time to have to mold and sculpt every fold and every crease for every frame of the shot. And so that actually birthed our sister brand, Marvelous Designer. So the biggest um, similarity between Clo and Marvelous Designer is that at the core of their softwares, they have garment simulation. 
which essentially means that you're able to turn gravity on so that the garments can drape and move the way that they would in real life. The biggest difference between the two is that while Ted here needs to look cute on screen, he does not care about pattern corrections or about having a tech pack that you can take through production. Um, so I always say when you want things to look true to life, that is when you use Clo. Because if something isn't fitting correctly, you want to be able to make those changes to your pattern and see the updates in real time in your 3D window. But when you want things to look perfect on screen, on screen, that's when you use Marvelous Designer. So just to give you a quick insight to the MD side, we work with everyone from the creators of EA Sports. It was used on all of the clothing done in Moana. And it's also been used on every Marvel movie you've ever seen. So this is what it looks like pre-production. And this is what it looks like post-production. So the team here used MD to create Dr. Strange's entire cape to make sure that they captured that dramatic effect as he entered into the scene. Uh, but today, obviously, all of you are super interested to hear about Clo. And so over the last couple of years, we're very thankful that the fashion industry has come around to designing in a 3D space and we're positioned all across the globe. Uh, still with our founding members and development teams based out of Korea, um, but Kelly and I are based um, out of the New York office on the East Coast and we recently opened up an office out in LA uh, back in February and we're looking to expand in Central and South America as well. So the most important thing to know about Clo up top is that we truly specialize in true to life 3D garment simulation. So similar to what I was saying before, what this really means is that if you have a pattern for your garment, your materials, your trims, your prints, your colors, and you create that garment in Clo, it will look and behave the way that it would in real life. But I think what's even cooler that you'll see once you dip your toes into the software is that the software itself is made to feel very true to life and the 3D space really gives you that freedom to move about and style and um, uh, kind of place things around the, around the way that you would in real life as well. Um, so Kelly will be showing that for you shortly. Uh, but first I wanted to show you some capabilities with Inclo. So all of the images that you're about to see are renders that are directly from the Clo software. So for starters, um, you can obviously make looks with multiple layers like you would in real life. You can also create garments with functioning trims. So buttons that you can open and close, zippers that you can zip up and down, and you can even create functional pockets. And I think one of the coolest things that our clients have done is they will uh, bring in hard objects into the software and then put them inside of the pocket to make sure that they're fitting correctly. So for example, you know, something in the shape of an iPhone, putting that in a back pocket, or even like a back zipper part on leggings that you might want to put a key in. So you can get really creative with the things that you look to make decisions based off of using Clo. And once you've created a couple garments or products, you can actually place them around in really cool merchandising flat lays like you see here too. So as you guys explore Clo, I would also, I wouldn't just think about it in terms of how it could be useful for just you as designers, but it's also how can other counterparts use these assets to further um, their discovery and how they might utilize them throughout the software as well. In Clo, it's really easy to connect your print and graphic libraries. Um, so you're able to drag and drop different print prints and use them in Clo as well. There's also a multitude of different fabrics and material types to capture different effects, whether that be lace, netting to be able to see through it or to give something like a metallic shine like you see here. One of the other big benefits um, in Clo that we don't really think about in real life all the time, especially when you're designing at a brand or a manufacturer, is that Clo gives you the ability to bring in multiple avatars at one time so that's really helpful for designers because you guys are then able to see your entire collection come together as you're designing it. Um, so that helps you to avoid any duplication or capture any white space that in real life when you're working on physical samples, you might not see that bigger picture until you get to the very last stage. We also have clients that utilize Clo for full marketing campaigns and even more interesting that will use it for graphic placement. So Dionese, as you see here, they utilize Clo um, for marketing campaigns like you see in this window, but also they will put their avatar in different positions on the bike so that they can make sure that their sponsor's logos are, signed, are, are seen regardless of where that rider is going around the track. 
So again, it, 3D just gives you the ability to really think about all the different ways that you can make these decisions far in advance before receiving that first physical sample or having to create it yourself. You can also create a multitude of other product categories such as lingerie and swimwear. In addition to accessories, so backpacks, small leather goods, handbags. Um, within Clo, we do have a multitude of um, accessory avatars as well, which are all customizable. So you're able to kind of have something to get you started so that you can design around that avatar. And similar to the garments as well, you can utilize Clo as a 3D space to arrange your products if you want them on a wall or a tea stand or something of that nature. And we have clients that have really pushed the limits too, even in terms of costumes um, and even other crazy things like making teddy bears and the software as well, which I believe, Kaylee, you were the one who made these, which are super cute. <laughs> And something that a lot of people don't know also is that Ikea's catalog is almost 100% digitized at this time too. So they no longer have to worry about going through the big dog and pony show of having these super expensive photo shoots. They're actually able to take the assets in Clo, lay them up like you see in the render here, and then all they have to do is impose pictures of people on top of them for their catalog. Um, so usually uh, about this time, I would kind of give like a breakdown of how the software works, but I really want to save Kaylee time to show you that herself and leave time for questions. Um, so I think I'm actually going to just jump to um, something else that we have, uh, which is another platform that could be super helpful for you to you guys in the future as well, which is called Close Set. So Close Set, um, I kind of explain it like a Google Drive specifically for 3D assets. So it is a web-based platform that can really function as your hub of communication for 3D. Um, so this is really helpful. You're able to upload your products directly from Clo into Closet, and then you can share that information and those garments either internally with your classmates or externally. Let's say you were working at a brand and you had vendors or manufacturers that used Clo. You can use this as a communication tool to make comments, annotate, and have a full running history of everything that's happened with this, that style. Um, yeah, so this is another great tool. There's other things that come out of it that are super helpful as well, because, you know, all the renders that you guys just saw are exciting and they look amazing and they make you question whether they were real or fake, but it's all of the metadata that lives within those files that is so important. So using Clo is not just a visual tool. It truly has everything that you need in order to produce that garment. So within Clo, Close Set, you also have the ability to export out a full tech pack which will show your 2D pattern, your points of measure, your full bill of materials, graphic and print placement. Um, so again, anything that a factory would need um, in order to produce that garment lives within those files. And you know, you guys are, are truly the, the future of the fashion industry. And so learning Clo, um, I think is super important and really going to be a feather in your cap as you guys move forward into the industry for work experience because a lot of major brands, manufacturers are using Clo today. And even if that's not the path for you and you decide to freelance or work on your own, um, there's a whole new space that has been opened up in the last year or so for 3D freelancers and designers. And we actually have a special part on our website called Clo Lab, where we've brought this community together. So this is where you will find um, all of our users and power users from around the globe who feed their 3D portfolios. Um, and we've had a lot of clients that will reach out to people on here for freelance work or to be hired full time. And I just really wanted to stress the fact that building that community and setting you guys up for success in the future is our main priority as a company. We want to build and cultivate this community where um, 3D, 3D designers have more opportunities and can, can connect more throughout the community. Um, so just wanted to share that with you guys as well today. Um, but aside from that, thank you guys so much so far. I will turn it over to Kaylee now so that you guys can really see everything live in action. Awesome. Thank you, Court. All right. Um, what we'll do too, we'll just dive right into the demo. I'm going to show a live demo of the software. Um, but before I do that, I'll just introduce myself briefly. Um, hi everyone, I'm Kaylee. I am the design team lead based out of the New York office uh, for Clo Americas. 
Um, I've been at CLO for a little over three years now. Um, and so my background, I graduated from the uh, fashion school and with a fashion design degree. Um, and then I worked in technical design for a number of years before joining the CLO team. Um, so I did not learn 3D at my previous position, but I saw really this as the future of the industry and wanted to be a part of that um, to help the to help fashion or help the fashion industry move forward. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. I see a number of former professors and friends on the guest list or the participants list. So uh, thank you for being here. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and we'll dive into a demo. If you have any questions as we're going through, if you want to leave that in the chat, and I'm going to leave time at the end uh, for questions for either Court or myself. Um, and I know that Marguerite also wanted to say a few words as well. So we'll, I'll try and keep this as short as possible and show you as many tools um, in a short period of time. Kaylee, if I see anything come up in the chat that's relevant to like what you're showing right then and there, I'll give you a shout. Perfect. Okay. Can everyone see my close screen? Looks good. All right. I am going to stop my video just to help with that. So I'm not fighting against it here, but all right. Awesome. So let's dive into this. Um, so I wanted to start with just my avatar today because I know that sometimes our a lot of the times when we're developing product, we might not have a previous pattern to import. So in the industry, you're able to import a DXF pattern or you can start directly in CLO just by drawing on your avatar. So I'm gonna demonstrate that of a bit about each option that you have. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start by drawing a little bit of a bodice here. So I can mark out on my avatar where I want that center front to be. You can see this purple line is showing me the exact center of that avatar. I can also use this around the waistline to start to mark out those points. I'm gonna mark out the center back. And then what's nice as well is it doesn't always have to be straight lines. I can use curve points to mark out this section here. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. You can always come back and edit this. Um, I'm now then going to draw out my armhole here as well. The benefit of using this tool is it's really taking into account the curvature of the avatar. And this is one of the CLO default avatars, but you can bring in your own avatars. So say that you um, are making your own in a software like DES, or you bring in a dress form as well, like an Alvinon form. You can use those in CLO as well with this tool. Um, so now I have my basic bodice, the front and the back, but I'm going to start to map out my princess seam. So say I want my placement to start about here. I'm going to mark out with some curve points generally where I want this to be placed. And then I'll also mark out the center back. All right, great. Now, as I'm moving, if I wanted to make any edits or if there's any points that I wanted to move around, I can do that here. So I see that this one's standing out a little bit. Also, please um, excuse the alarms in the background. I'm in New York, so <laughs> there's a few going on. Um, and now what I'm doing is just selecting my pattern pieces once I have them drawn on my avatar. And when I press Enter, this is just going to create my pattern pieces. Now, what's also really nice is they're already sewn together. So it's not fully simulated, but I'm able to see these pattern pieces that have been created. One other thing I do want to show you, because I did not show this, is that before I actually create these pieces, I can select which lines I want to be straight lines. So meaning my center front, center back, and shoulder seams will always stay at a straight line rather than taking into account the curvature of the body. So I'm gonna do this one more time just to show you the difference here. Right? And then when I press enter, I see these pieces form. Now what's really nice is I didn't have to draft anything. I'm simply just arranging around my avatar. All right, um, so I'm gonna arrange these in my pattern window, so my 2D window and I can start to make a symmetric copy. So I only have one half of my bodice right now. Go ahead and make a second half. So I'm making a symmetrically linked copy. So anything that I do on one side now will also be made on the other side. 
The last step is just to sew together my center front and center back. And now I have a bodice formed that I can start to pull at as I would on my fit model or on my dress form. Before I dive in and I'm gonna make this into a dress, I'm gonna make a few edits to my bodice. So I see that there's some areas here that I'm not too happy with. This is the curvature that came out of the, um, from the flattening. I'm gonna make some quick edits and just make the shape a little bit smoother here. And I'm gonna reduce the curve maybe on this side. So what's really nice is you're able to see these edits very quickly happen in real time. So I see that as I'm making this reduction, I see that right then and there. And I can also pick at the pattern where I maybe I wanna make those adjustments. So you can make as many adjustments as you want. There's really no limitation there. And you can always go back to even if you're further in the process. There's not a step-by-step um, a -step process necessarily as you would if you had a paper pattern. Next thing I'm gonna do here is I see that there's a slight dip in the front. There's an option here to see your, where your placement is on your waist. So I'm gonna do this in the 3D window. It also tells me the measurement. So I'm gonna place this piece here. I can actually make a, um, a correction to my pattern right here. So I'm gonna cut off this portion of the pattern and then I can actually get rid of this, these pieces and see that correction right here in the, um, the 3D window. I'm gonna hide my measurements because I do see some of them peeking through where I've drawn on the avatar. And I'm gonna start now by making a skirt. So in the 3D window, um, if you wanted to take the measurement of your avatar, so as you're drafting, I already have a measurement laid out for my, um, my widest point of my hip or my low hip. And this is 37.65. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make a pattern piece and start to drape my skirt. So I'm gonna make a rectangle that's at the half. So let's start with a 19 width um, that I'm gonna sew then to one half of my garment. What's really great about the 2D or the 2D shapes is that I can start to freely drape this around my avatar. So if I was going to turn on simulation, this would start to drape to the ground. So it's really fun to play around with. If it's not sewn somewhere, it's going to fall. But I can just freely sew this piece to my waistline. And I can do multiple seams at once. And there's no seam ripping involved if you also mess up your sewing. So I'm just gonna allow that to fly to my avatar here. And now she's draped around. I do see that there's some shearing at the waist, which we will look at in just one second. I'm gonna make a symmetric copy here to the other side and go ahead and simulate that. Now, you do see that my center front and center back aren't sewn, but I'm just gonna stitch that up. There we are, great. So I see that she's a little bit um, tight around the hip because we just took into account her waist measurement, but we didn't give her any fullness, but we do have some shearing at the um, waistline. I'm gonna use what's called our fullness tool to slash and spread this area. So I'm gonna start to make or, or shape out my skirt. I can now choose where the fullness is gonna be. So I can choose on both sides um, and I can start to reduce at the top and keep that shape at the bottom. So I'm gonna reduce this down to say 13 to really be the same at the waist. And let's add some fullness at the bottom. Let's add like 10 inches, give her a fit and flare skirt. And what's nice is that once I do this, this is symmetrically linked. So this correction will happen at both sides. It looks a little bit crazy, but I promise you once we simulate, she'll fix, or the drape will fix. All right. Awesome, okay. So now that I have this correction, I can use my hand tool to also start to style my skirt. Um, and if you wanted to make any corrections, I see that she's hiking a little bit in the back. I can um, lengthen that on my bodice, you can continue to make as many corrections as you'd like. So I'm even just gonna maybe drop that down a little bit in the back um, and you can continue to make these corrections. 
But for the sake of time, I'm gonna continue on here and jump into applying materials. If you wanted to make any edits in the 2D window, I'm actually gonna to merge together my center back, or my center fronts, excuse me. And this will maintain the symmetry of my pattern pieces. But what it's doing is just merging those pieces together. So um, you still can make corrections on both sides, but it's getting rid of that center front seam. Awesome. All right, so now I have my little foot and flare dress. Um, just in the matter of minutes, really, and this was starting from nothing in the window. Um, I can continue to make as many edits as I want if I wanted to lengthen this, shorten this. And But what I'm going to do now is start to apply some materials. So as Courtney was saying, um, those fabric physics are really going to affect the drape. So in the Clo software, there's about 75 default fabrics that you can apply. So say that I wanted to add, I'm going to start with a poplin here. And when I simulate, you can see that tighten up. I can even turn on my fit maps to see what that would look like on how tight it is against the body. She still has a little bit of space, but um, as it gets closer, you would be able to see how much the fabric is straining or stretching. All right, let's say let's go into a knit and we'll see a softer drape. So I'm gonna go down into my knit. So let's see, I'm gonna add a Ponte jersey. And as I simulate, I see that drape change. Awesome. So I'm gonna continue to just use my hand tool. So when I simulate, this is just being able to reposition this on my avatar's body. Awesome, all right. So when you're happy with your fabric, you can continue to change it. Otherwise, you can start to add some more materials. So meaning prints or other details to your garment. So say for this dress, I want us to start to add a print. This is personally one of my favorite parts of the software. I'm just gonna jump into a folder that I have some prints saved. So um, as Courtney was mentioning too, you can, add prints as many different things in close, or really any um, any artwork file. So to Kelly, start, um, yeah. Sorry, one quick question. I think it, it might be relevant. Um, Abby had a great question. Can you just explain a little bit what, what the different colors on the fit map mean? Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so let's jump into the, um, the I was in the strain map. So there's a few different maps in Clo, um, and there's also different ways to view it. So the different colors, the closer to red it gets means the more that the fabric is stretching itself. So around the bust line, you're gonna see a little bit more stretch or even around the waist because it's in tighter areas. Whereas blue means it's really not stretching all that much. It's, it's um, draping as or with very little stretch or little to no stretch. Um, so this percentage panel means that the higher up the percentage goes, the more it's stretching. And you can customize this panel too. So if there was someone that was like, a, say, in an athletic wear brand, um, they might have a higher stretch um, ratio or key that would show higher amounts of stretch for, like, say, a legging fabric. Um, but that's really what this means here. So the, the more that you see, or like the, the closer it is to red, the more that it is stretching. And you'll see this more in like, say like a denim or something that's more tight fitting, uh, but you see this a little bit around her waist and her bust area. Awesome, thanks Court. Okay, um, so let's dive in now. I'm gonna add a print. So. Let's start by adding a floral print. I have a few here and we can, of course, vary this up as well. So if I have a floral print that I've created, I can add this as a JPEG, PNG, AI file, um, any file really that create or, uh, holds artwork. So I have this floral pattern that I've applied all over to my dress. Now, Personally, one of my favorite parts of the software is being able to scale your prints and place them. Also color blocking. So say I like this print, but I don't like the scale of it. I can choose to scale this up or scale this down just in a matter of clicking and dragging, or I could also do this by percentage. 
What's also really nice is that I can scale or um, sorry, pan each piece. So if you have placement prints or stripes that you would like to match or just specific areas that you want the print to be, you can use this in order to do so. Another awesome thing that I always love to show is this is um, new actually in our latest version 6.0 is the texture editor. So with the texture editor, what this allows me to do is actually blend different prints together. So if you wanted to see what something might look like overlapping, but without making permanent changes to your artwork, you can do so. Say I wanted to add a plaid to this. Let's scale this plaid up and maybe tile this over the body. And right now it looks a little bit crazy, but what I'm gonna do is blend this into say the bottom piece. So if I wanted to, I could continue to scale this up, scale this down, and you can see those changes immediately on your print. I can also rotate the prints in different directions to see what this might look like. I'm gonna bring this back to this area. Great, all right, awesome. So say I'm happy with how this looks, I can change that. There's many different blending options. So if you wanted to play with different options, actually that looks kind of cool. Um, the overlay option, there's a number of different options that you actually would find in say um, a photo or an illustrator um, in order to change those layers together. I can continue to move these pieces around and actually rotate the print without changing the grain line as well. Awesome. All right, so I'm gonna save and close this. What this will do now is save as a new tiled image. So if I wanted to use this artwork somewhere else, it's a baked texture or an image that's been created based on what I made in the texture editor. Awesome, all right. Um, awesome, so if you also wanted to say, make a, um, a, a color blocked image or a color blocked pattern piece, I can make this really simply by just um, creating a new fabric roll. So I'm going to do this just by selecting the pieces that I want to be um, on a different color block. So just some my side panels here. I'm going to dive into this and maybe this texture is a little bit different. In this case, I'm going to do multiply just for this edge. So it's the opposite, but it's color blocked together. You go ahead and save and close that and you see that edit right then and there. One other feature that I also love to show is called print layout. And I think this is so powerful because you're able to see all your pattern pieces on one roll. So if you know the fabric roll width, you can put in this fabric roll measurement and then see how your pattern pieces are lying and actually know your initial yield based on how you're placing them. Um, so you can add also your seam allowance here too to take that into account. Um, let me go into my some of my larger pieces. I can nest this on this piece and I can actually see that my my um, my skirt piece isn't fitting on my roll based on the current size. So this is all really helpful. So maybe I would make another seam or know that I need to use a um, a wider fabric roll. Awesome. You can save this image out also to know for your uh, print placements. And I'm going to dive back in. And then this will also take into account in our BOM um, our editor how much fabric you're using. And you can actually put in some pricing as well to get um, a sample cost. All right. Any questions so far before I jump into top stitching and um, I'm going to do also some graphics. Kaylee, there were no other individual. Oh, wait, hang on. We just got one from Abby. Okay. Is there a way to split patterns? Uh, split patterns as far as cut them in half? Uh, yes, she said like add seams. Yes. Okay, absolutely. Um, so that's a great question. So say I wanted to add a side seam here. Um, what I could do is actually just create internal shapes. So that's a really good question. If I wanted to, I could either just draw directly on my pattern and cut from there, or I could actually offset a line. So say I wanted to make a, let's say I wanted to make a 
I don't know, three inch offset. You could do it this way and then actually cut and sew this. Um, so say I wanted to make a back panel here. I have an internal line and then I could actually cut and sew this piece. So you can make as many different edits as you'd like. And then maybe I even wanna color block this. So you can have a lot of fun with how you color block, how you position um, each piece. You can also use those internal lines to make facings, linings, um, and a number of other options as well, or placements to put tags. Um, really, the possibilities are endless there. So hopefully that answered your question. That's awesome. Abby said, thank you, Kaylee. We had one more great question that came in. Could these yes. pattern pieces be printed? Yes, great question. OK, so there's a few options. So. One option here is you can export this out as a DXF pattern. Um, you also can save as an Adobe PDF. But um, so why I mention this is that if you do not have the option to use a plotter um, or to print this out, you can also save this out from the print layout menu as an image to save or print out like on a, um, a regular printer as well as a tiled um, pattern piece. So you can actually see like what those um, pieces would be like. So depending on your option, um, you can do you can do multiple things. You can have a one-to-one -one ratio um, to print out or you can also export as a DXF pattern to have that printed as well. I believe that there's a there would be a printer in the fashion school that you could use as well, but you have the option to export to plotter or export to a um, DXF pattern too. Awesome. All right. Jordan said, thank you. There's no other questions um, at this point. Perfect. Thanks, Court. All right. No problem. Okay, let's dive in next. Um, so I want to go through some graphic options. Um, so I'll go through this. Um, and then we'll go through and see if anyone else has any questions. But um, I want to show more options of, for adding details. So say when you get to this point, um, I remember are doing lots of different flats as well in design school. There's an option here in this window that you can do what's called schematic render. So in this window, I can start to outline my garment and show different positioning. And I have the option to show this in either color, so just like a white um, or white and gray image, or also in texture. So this really brings to life, I would say, like a flat image, or um, if you wanted to use this to show more detailed positioning of where your seam lines or top stitchings are. Um, you can change the color too. So if you want to make this a little um, or a little uh, give it a little more pop, you can absolutely do that. While I'm here, what I'll um, also talk about is that we do have a partnership with Pantone. So you can search their fashion libraries here um, and add different fashion um, colors. So if you go into this menu, you can actually search by um, Pantone name or number. You also can create your own libraries or import a uh, ACO or ASC files from Illustrator or Photoshop. All right. I'll press OK. I'll keep my little purple color here. Um, if you do not want to use a schematic render, you can also just simply turn this off and it will go back to your normal 3D window. Awesome. OK, so diving into our next thing here, I'm going to add some embroidery to my garment and then we're going to add some top stitching. Um, so embroideries can be added in multiple ways. Um, this can also include um, this can also include graphics as well. So if you have a graphic that you'd like to add, in this case, I'm going to add some um, little flowers around her neckline. So in this case, I have an image that I want to add and I'm placing this as a graphic on my garment. I'm gonna scale this down to a size of two and I can scale that immediately before even adding it to my garment. So I'll bring this down here. And I can position these in either the 2D or the 3D window, which is really nice. And once I'm happy, so say I like this placement, I'm going to go ahead and copy this now to the other side. 
You also have the option to say some are um, copy to a symmetrically linked pattern piece. Ooh, sorry about that, guys. There we go. Um, you can copy it to a symmetrically linked pattern piece. I just copied it in a different way. There we go. Um, and you can play with this and position this on either side of your pattern. Um, if you have this on the back of your uh, pattern, you can symmetrically link it to the other side. So if you had a tag placement or um, another print placement that you wanted to use, you could do that as well. What's also really fun with graphics is that if you wanted to change the um, appearance of them, I can come in here and change the color. I can add an additional color. Say I wanted to make this a little bit more of a pink tone. Let's go in and find a, a pink here. You have the option to keep the, um, the color that's already there, or you can also desaturate your image um, to give it more of that hue. One thing I also love to show is that there's different material types. So if I wanted this to be more of a metallic look, um, you can make it look more like a heat seal. Um, you really can have a lot of fun with this. There's different options, glitter, silk, satin, velvet. Um, so really whatever you want this to look like. I'm just gonna go back one step um, to keep it back to that purple image that I first applied. Awesome, okay. Um, so one more thing I'm going to show here is just top stitching before I jump into rendering. So top stitching, I'm going to apply a top stitch to my bottom hem here. Um, so in my top stitch library, I can make um, either custom top stitches or import them from my Quill library. So there is a top stitch folder in the defaults that come with Clo that include ISO standard numbers. So this is really great as you're learning about different top stitches and um, different machine types that apply these top stitches. Say that I wanted to, we do have a knit dress. So say that I'm going to apply a um, double needle cover stitch. I'm gonna apply this here. And then I can add this to my bottom hemline. So we diff have different sewing tools that allow me to apply this. And I'm just clicking on the edge of the pattern to simply apply. So as I zoom in here, I'm just gonna change the color because this is blending in. Let's match this like pink color that we have here, great. Okay, so we color match that. I have a little eyedropper tool that allowed me to do it. And here's my top stitch. And what's nice is I can actually change the text of this. So if it's a thicker text, say I'm using, say it's 60 text, I can also change the offset of this as well. So maybe we have an inch for our bottom hemline. Here we are. Awesome. And you can add as many different top stitches to your dress as you'd like. Um, one last thing I'm gonna jump into before I go into rendering is colorway mode. So I love this option as well, um, to see different options of your garment before maybe you decide um, what to render or render all those colorways together. Um, so this is a nice way to say, change up your print or change up the colors that you're using. So for this one, I'm gonna select all of my graphics and actually change this to more of a purple color. I can also apply a color on top of my prints here to see maybe what that would look like if I was gonna make this lighter lilac color or play around with this, yeah. Let's make it this color. Great. Um, and if you, you can shift and select all of these at once so you don't have to individually change the colors here. Awesome. Just to see that update, I'm going to update that here and you have two different options. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to dive into rendering quickly just to show you how you can export some options from Clo. Um, and then from here, if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer. Um, so one last thing I'm going to do before I render, um, there's, as you're working in Clo, um, you're working in a, a, what I would call like a, a lower resolution. And then as you go into render mode, you're going to make it into that high quality to make those folds and drapes look super realistic. Um, so you'll see some more crease lines as I go into this mode. 
Um, the reason we do this is because it's a little bit slower as you get closer um, or as you uh, make it a higher resolution. All right. Um, so before I jump into this, I'm gonna show you one other option. So if I wanted to hide my avatar and just see my dress here, I can go into what's called snapshot. So I'm gonna just name this here. Great. And I can do a multi-view. So say I wanted to front side back view. These are generic views that are taken in Clo, but you can also take custom views. So maybe I wanted to jump in closer into the um, embroidery and take that image here. I can take up to 10 different uh, view counts and you can save this as a composite or as separate images. So I can save those out and those will save in that file location. Then lastly, what I'm gonna do is jump into our render window. And this is honestly one of my favorite parts of the software as well. I know I have a lot, but um, what this allows you to do is really create your 3D window in a, to a photo studio and have a lot of fun with it. So if you wanted to bring multiple garments into this window, or if you wanted to create a background, you could do that too. Um, so I'm gonna just change the size a bit and then I can jump into rendering this. And this is an interactive window. So as I'm zooming in, you can see different um, ways that the um, garment looks. So this is a preview. And once I feel like I'm ready, I can go ahead and render this dress. So I'm gonna add some lighting. Um, these are what are called environment maps. So if you wanted to add different environments, I have different studios or studio lights that come with the Clo program, but you can also download your own or create your own even. Um, there's a number of websites that are really great. Um, uh, great uh, they have great libraries as well, and a number of them are free. Um, so these are what's called HDR files, and you can use these to show the background or create a photo studio, if you will. And you can have fun with this. This could be something like a park or um, this could just be a photo studio or whatever you want it to be. Now, once I'm all set and I'm happy with what this looks like, I can go ahead and render. I can also save this as a transparent background too. So it really depends on um, what you would like. So if you want a transparent background um, to use in another presentation, you could do that as well. All right, once I'm all set, I'm gonna go ahead and start to render this out. Um, and then the software will let me know when it's all set. But while I'm letting that render, are there any questions that I can answer? Kaylee, the one um, question that came in earlier, I was gonna wait to see if you had time at the end. I'm not sure if we do. Um, yeah. Someone was interested in seeing what it would look like for a sleeve or pants. If you don't have time for that, I did tell them that there's like a ton of examples on our YouTube page, which I sent the link to, but just throwing that out there. We, we're, we got 10 minutes, uh, nine minutes left. <laughs> what pants would look like? Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I have some. I mean, I have, I have a lot of stuff that I could show you. Um, I'm not sure we'll have a, a, be able or have time to get to all of it today. But um, for example, like I have denim that I've used for demos um, or created in the software as well, um, or even dresses, really, you name it, you can do this in Clo. It's all about the soft simulation here. Um, let me see if there's something that I can pull up. I also did want to show quickly, I know that you touched on close set. Or, um, I did want to just show quickly the um, YouTube tutorials. So let me show that and then we'll see what we have time for for a few more questions. Okay, so this is our website. Um, in the top right hand corner, there is a trial download option. So if you do not have the trial already, you can download the, a 30 day free trial. Um, and this will give you full access to everything that you're seeing that I have here, all the, um, the default library materials, um, including the avatars and the default fabrics. 
Um, there's also a Getting Started in Clo tutorial series on our YouTube page. So this is really great. Um, it's called Beginner's Guide to Clo. And this takes you through the, a beginner's, um, really a beginner's training. So going through the layout, um, how to get started in navigation and selection, sewing, um, and all the way through rendering. Um, so this is a really great asset to start learning um, Clo. And I would say that you can you can get through a bit or a good chunk of it um, even just in a few days. So definitely check that out. All right. All right. Let me bring up the chat as well and see what other questions that we have. I'm not able to see it. I don't know why. I'm not able to see the chat for some reason, um, but if there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, Kelly, I don't, oh, let's see. Oh yeah, the question from Anne about how does one get access and featured on the Clo Lab? Oh, sorry, Anne, I think I must have accidentally sent that to someone privately by accident. <laughs> um, basically, if you go on Clolab, the link that was sent earlier in the chat, all you have to do is just sign up to create a, an account and then you can start featuring your work on there. You don't have to get like a, approved or anything. Anyone is welcome to go on and create an account. And I just put the link on there again for everyone. Awesome. Awesome. On the YouTube pages. That oh, I see. On. Okay. So I see Laura's question is um, Clo compatible with drawing tablets. So in your settings, you can actually um, set what your controller is. I'm using a three click mouse, but if you wanted to use a different option, we have the Wacom pen option, magic mouse, um, tablets options. Um, so really whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, so that it, you definitely can use that. Um, so if you're a, you're a Wacom user, um, feel free to do that too. All right. Awesome. I see. Thanks, Kaylee. Sorry, I just saw one other question that I missed from Jolie. Yeah. Um, so just to kind of, if there's anyone else from any other universities that's on the call too, I guess it's good to kind of level set. So essentially, if, if you're a university and you're planning on using CLO in the classroom and incorporating it into your curriculum, um, you have to go through CLO to purchase academic licenses. I'm going to send in the chat right now my email address so that if anyone is interested in that, they can reach out to me. So the students at, at Kent, for example, who will be taking CLO in a class, they'll be able to use the licenses that Kent State purchased. I'm not sure how Kent State is distributing those licenses, so I'll have to default to the, the faculty there for any of the students who are interested. Um, but anyone who is interested in learning CLO on their own, in their personal time, as a freelancer, you're able to purchase a license from the website as an individual user. But basically, again, if you're planning on teaching it in the classroom, it has to go through the official academic licenses. Um, and I'm sending my email right there right now if anyone else has any questions regarding um, how to acquire CLO licenses or what is the best means or path that you guys should be taking. I hope that that helped to answer Jolie. Awesome. Um, I see a question from Miranda about flat lays. Um, so there is, in the YouTube series, I don't think it specifically shows about flat lays, but there are other um, tips and tricks videos on our YouTube page. Um, so you definitely will go through um, the tools in order to do so. And I, I think that there are several tips and tricks that are different, like uh, tips, if you will, um, to, to show you a great ways to go about that. Awesome. I don't think we missed any others. Um, if, if there aren't any other questions, I will give it back to you, Margarita. All right. Thank you so much. Um, this was fantastic. And 
I mean, you are so versatile with the software. You know it inside and out. But honestly, I've seen students they they take to it like ducks in water. It's it's the it's user friendly. It's intuitive. Um, so I highly recommend it. If your school doesn't have it, you should absolutely talk to Courtney and see what you can figure out. And if not, just try the free licenses. There was one time in my class that we actually used the three license, uh, the 30 day licenses to, and the students learned it and they did tutorials for each other and it was fantastic. Um, and some of them got jobs because they had that in their portfolio. So uh, can't say enough good stuff about Clo. So I do wanna give a shout out, let me, share my screen again uh, to all the people that are making this event possible. And I think I think I did, there it is. Um, so we've got a lot of funding and support from all these uh, companies as well as student organization. Our students here are really involved um, in a variety of different student organizations, FSO being the largest. And then I did want to just briefly say, Clo has done a fantastic uh, kind offering to give licenses to uh, a team of winners um, selected for like the best use of virtual tech in the hackathon. These are the challenges we have. There's three challenges um, for the large prizes, but necessarily if, if the teams do something really phenomenal with the Clo software, we definitely want to give them um, give them the license so that they can continue to, to pursue that and have that in their tool set. So thank you so much, Clo, for that. And then that that is pretty much it on our end. Um, if you have questions, email us. The event starts next week. If you're an instructor, we do need mentors for all sorts of different disciplines. And please share your student uh, share to your students as well. Uh, we have students from around the world right now. I checked earlier today, we had a <laughs> Australia and Antarctica. So we have an Africa, Asia, Europe. It's going to be a wild event. So again, thank you, Kaylee. Thank you, Courtney. And um, we'll send out an email with the recording in case you want to see it. And hopefully catch you next weekend. Thanks again, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.